I have not gone on my phone yet today, and I highly, highly recommend it. Welcome to day 11 of Podmas. Today we're talking about our phones, being phone free, spending some time away from our phones. And for me, this changed a lot in my last week because my boyfriend was like, Jess, you need this. So let's get into it. I was needing to raise my vibrations for a specific event that I was going to. I may share it in a future episode, (laughs) so subscribe so you don't miss it. And I was really, really struggling. I was feeling really, really overwhelmed. I was just having trouble making decisions, having trouble getting things done. I wasn't being very productive. And so I was like, uh, homeboy Josh, can we go on a date and you help me solve my problems? And ooh, let's start with the TMI story. So we're in my car and we're parked and we're going to go into a mall and walk around and have a cute little date. And I'm like, okay, Beb, like I really want to tell you some things I'm struggling with and like get your opinion on them. I like really value his opinion and he knows me really well and can really help me solve my problems. So I'm telling him what I'm struggling with and what I don't, how I don't know what to do and whatever. And then like a couple minutes into me ranting to him, he goes, sorry, I really have to go poo. (laughs) And I was like, oh my God, that's so, like, he is, he is an at-home pooer. So I was like, oh my God, okay, let's go inside, go poo. And so then we were walking into the mall and I was like, so can I finish telling you about my problems later though, after you poo? And he's like, yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. And then we were at the rec room and playing like, it's like an arcade. We were playing arcade games. And so then at one point he's like, okay, so like, tell me though, like, tell me more about like what you're struggling with. I was like, no, 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 this is too overwhelming of a space to do it in. I'll tell you when we like get settled. So then finally at the end of the night, we're like sitting, we're having some sushi and we are just like chatting and we're like throwing out all these ideas of like how I could solve my problems. And like, he's like, try sleeping in more, turn off your alarm if you don't need to get up at a certain time. Or like, why don't you make sure you're getting your exercise in or like this and that. We're throwing so many things into the air. And I'm like, okay, okay, this could work, this could work, whatever. Then at the very, very, very end of the night, I'm dropping him off, we're sitting in my car, and he makes a joke about taking my phone. And he's like, oh, I'll take your phone and I'll give it to you tomorrow. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, you can't take my phone. And there was just so much resistance in my body. And it was such a sign for me of like, Jess, if you're having all this resistance, like you need to listen to this. He didn't take my phone. He was like, I'm kidding. I'm not taking your phone. Like, you need it to drive home and make sure you get there safely. And he's like, what the fuck would you tell your mom? Like, my boyfriend confiscated my phone. But I was like, okay, though, you really did open up something that is, I think, really important and really, really triggered something for me. Because at the end of the day, if we're being honest with myself, I know I am overly addicted to my phone as we all are but I just knew that was actually the truth and the root of the problems of what I was experiencing and he's like Jess more than ever because this event is coming up you need this like you will regret it if you just stay on your phone for the next couple days and you walk into this event with a really low vibe so I was like fuck you're right okay I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna get off my phone but then like all of these like roadblocks were coming up in my head because we're trying to like make up all these excuses for why we can't do the hard thing that we know will be better for us in the long run so I'm like what about my social media posts and this and that and whatever and finally I'm just like Jess you need this like point blank period you need to do this so like figure it out or just like let go and not go on social media for a couple days like you won't fucking die and So I got home and I gave my mom my phone and I was like, we had this whole realization. I really need to do this. Please keep it in your room, whatever. I'm going to spend the next couple days off of it. And one of the biggest like warning signs that I want to emphasize for why I knew this would be really important for me to do was I would start to have these feelings whenever I was on my phone and when I was feeling really chaotic of like, why is everyone messaging me? I need everyone to leave me the fuck alone. And when I went phone free for a couple days, I discovered that I am seriously not getting a lot of texts. Truly, like not a lot of people are texting me throughout the day. I definitely have a bit more of DMs on Instagram, but I love my DMs. Always feel free to DM me at human tube and pod. And I realized I'm like, Jess, there aren't a lot of a lot of people contacting you. Like you genuinely 
aren't a popular bitch. Like, why were you feeling like so many people were trying to just get a hold of you that you couldn't function? And it's because I was literally in a heightened state of arousal at all all times and what that means is that my nervous system was overworking and was in fight or flight mode so much of my day because I was constantly stimulating myself by being on Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat and my email and my text messages like it is so fucked I check my email constantly and nothing comes through and I'm like why are you it's like a reflex that I'm just checking my email all the time so Huge realizations going on and I'm like, whoa, Jess, like you are just forcing yourself to be on this high state of alertness at all times and that's going to burn you out, make you so fucking agitated and exhaust you literally for no reason. I'm like, no wonder you can't get anything done. I started to realize that my phone feels like a nagging boyfriend that won't leave you alone. If it's near me in any sort of vicinity, I'm like, oh my God, there's my phone. There's my phone. I need to grab it. I need to touch it. I need to go on it when I do not. And I think it's built that way to just like pull us in and want us to spend our whole lives on it. But suddenly when I didn't have my phone near me and it was in my mom's bedroom and my dad's bedroom, my dad was away when this was happening. So that's why I just say my mom. Um, I was like so focused and it was out of sight, out of mind, not fully because there was definitely a lot of things that I was like, oh, I need my phone to do this or not. I need it, but it would make it easier to like log into my bank or, you know, reply to this message or go check this thing. But then I was like, okay, this is forcing you to slow down and it's helping you get things done quicker. And not just that, your brain feels better your brain feels so much more relaxed and then it's so funny because I had some reels to post for an episode that went live so I one time literally just like went on clicked it and like wasn't even looking at my phone and was just like click click post done because I'll prepare reels in advance and I would just force myself not to scroll not to get sucked in I would turn my brightness all the way down to post it and then Opal. I forgot that I even wanted to share about Opal in this episode, but Opal is the reason I'm able to have boundaries when I do have my phone on me all the time. And it allows me to block my social media use. So I would go on, post a reel, and then immediately go on Opal and set a focus blocking session, deep focus. So I can't take a break. I can't touch the apps. And I would do it for like 16 hours. So then it's like, okay, you're done on social media for the day, bitch. So I have a discount code. The code is HUMAN for 20% off. And you can click the link in the show notes if you would like to just try Opal out. You have a seven-day free trial. It's changed my life. I purchased Opal in January of last year and then realized how often I was sharing about it. I should like reach out and be like, hey, can I get a code for my for my lovers, for my community? (laughs) And they were like, yeah, 100%. So use my discount code human get 20% off and seriously it was the best money I've ever invested in something on my phone because it makes me feel like I can have my life back I don't go on social media I have it blocked for like a morning routine so I can't touch social media till 11 a.m and then 5 p.m onward I have it so it's like I can take breaks but social media is blocked and then 9 p.m onward can't touch it at all and now I'm also using blocking sessions more so I'll go on it once in the day maybe multiple times in the day, but I'll post my things I need to post and then I'll block it for the rest of the day. So that's a really helpful tool. Instead of throwing our phones out the window, you can just block the apps that you're addicted to. (laughs) Overall, with my phone-free phase that I want to implement more often, I needed accountability. I needed my boyfriend to tell me, you need to take a break from this. And then I needed to put my phone into my parents' bedroom so that every time I wanted to go on it, I was like weirdly going into their bedroom. And I was like, I know this is weird, but I just need to go do something really quickly on my phone. And then it would just force me to put it right back. So right now I've never not never, but it's been years since I've kept my phone in my bedroom when I sleep at night, but now I'm trying to put it even further away from my bed. So it used to be in the room right outside my bedroom, but now it's like way over in a little kitchen area in my basement that I just like, and I literally put a tea towel over it because if I see it, I'll want to touch it. And it made me realize that I touch my phone 
pretty quickly in the morning. Even though it's not the first thing I touch, I just still touch it within the first hour. So right now I've been awake for almost two hours and I haven't touched it and my brain feels so much more friggin' clear. There are two more things I want to say that I noticed when I was phone free. One is that it was so much easier to transition between activities. I noticed that the thing I would always reach for was to scroll on Instagram or just check my email for no reason when I was done one thing and ready to start another. So let's say I'm done recording this episode and then I need to go eat breakfast or eat lunch. I already ate breakfast, but I need to eat lunch. I would... I totally don't need to eat lunch when this is over because it will be 10 in the morning, but I'll need to eat something because I'm hungry right now. (laughs) But I would stop recording, save everything, and then immediately go touch my phone. When I don't need to do that, it's not urgent. I could stop recording everything, save everything, and then go upstairs and have a snack. And so not having your phone accessible and just being so intentional about not going on it helps you just cut out that middle bitch that's just distracting you for so much of your day and you can just flow between activities so much better and then be like okay wait suddenly everything's done but it's because I didn't waste all this fucking time in between it and it's so much harder to pull yourself away from your phone into a new activity than it is to pull yourself away from one activity and into another last thing I wanted to say is that I got my hair done while I was phone free and Every single time you get your hair done, you bring your phone and you scroll on it, especially if you get your hair dyed, you'll sit there and you'll just be like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling while you're waiting for your dye to like sink into your head, your hair. And so I didn't have my phone and I found it really interesting. I read a book for some of it. I just stared out the window for other parts of it. I would just wander around and I learned that our mind will entertain itself. We don't need to constantly put something in front of it. And the ways that your mind will entertain itself is so beautiful and reminds me of when we were a kid and we'd be on a long car ride or we would just be outside playing because my mind will find ways to just have fun and think about random things without needing this crutch that always distracts us and gives us information. It makes me think about when I did my 10 kilometer race, near the end of my run in the last kilometer, I was just struggling so much to get through it that I was like, I need to distract myself. I need to go somewhere cool in my brain. And my brain took me to the most interesting place it had ever gone. So know that like disconnecting gives us so much more time to let our imagination run and us connect with our inner child and also just like see what things come up when we just give ourselves so much time and space for different things to come to us you know what I mean this is why I love yoga this is why I love to be in nature and this is why I use opal because it gives me less distraction to be able to actually make this happen so If anything, I hope you take away that challenge yourself to go a couple hours today without your phone, go to a gathering without your phone. I drove to go to the Taylor Swift Eras Tour movie because it was like right around the time that it was going to stop playing in theaters. And I drove to a friend's house, picked her up and went and spent the whole night without my phone. And the thing that felt the weirdest was driving from my house to her house, which was only 20 minutes. But yet I felt so fucking uncomfortable not having my phone. I wrote down the directions on my, on a little notepad. And I also kind of knew how to get there. So I knew I wouldn't really need them. It was really simple. But then I was like, It was so bizarre. Before I left, I was like, this feels like the weirdest thing to text you. But just so you know, I'm not bringing my phone. So I'm going to knock on your door when I arrive, which is like, why the fuck? What kind of era are we living in to have to say that? in a text but she was the best she literally sat on her porch and she was sitting there all ready for me when I pulled up which I loved it meant so much I am that type of person who's like you tell me the time you'll be here and I'm sitting on the porch with my shoes on ready to go so that was really cool and it was just interesting to give myself the opportunity to see how I feel when I don't have this thing next to me as my fucking lifeline. And I've always tried not to be a text texter and driver. My mom's tried to really instill that into me, but it creeps in at stoplights and it's not good because that's literally how you can get in an accident and die. Okay. So we're going to end it on that dark point, but um, ha- have fun. Good luck. And let me know how it goes. Submit a story below in the show notes, human slash story submission. Everything is completely anonymous. Happy day.
11 of Podmas, and I will see you tomorrow for a new ep. Love you.